Don't do it. Whatever you're planning, don't do it. I, I beg, don't do it. Your daddy wouldn't want you to do it. Don't do it. You freaking idiot. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Shogun. We're now onto episode four, which is called The Eightfold Fence. So in the last episode, we had a lot of hijinks and traps and spy wick, spy craft, <laughs> all kinds of really interesting stuff go down. Essentially, we had Toranaga decide that he needed to get the heck up out of Edo because he knew that they were going to make another attempt either on his life or on the engine's life. And he needed to get away so he could start to plan for the inevitable war that they're trying to wage, not only just between the different regions, but with the information that John provided to him about the fact that the Catholic, the Portuguese Catholics have set up bases around Japan and that they're basically in a position where they could mobilize at any moment and decide to supplant the leaders there. There's a lot more going on and much bigger stakes. So either way, he knew that he couldn't stay in uh, Edo and continue to do any kind of planning that he needed to do. So with a very interesting plot, he managed to sneak out of the city. But unfortunately, we see that one of the other regents, one of the Christian regents, attempted to once again take out John. And then they discovered that Toronaga was in the group. So it kind of became an all-out assassination attempt. But thankfully, Toronaga's crew is no they're no chumps. They were ready to fight and they managed to get out to the boats and eventually get away uh, outside of the bay thanks to the help of a black ship that was actually not supposed to leave the port. We ended the episode with Toranaga on his way back to... Um, Sorry, he was leaving Osaka. Sorry, I have that all backwards. He was leaving Osaka to go back to Edo. Edo's where he's from. My bad. Y'all know what I meant. <laughs> but anyways, he's almost on his way back to Edo. But in the meantime, he's given John a high rank. He's going to be responsible for training Toranaga's men on how to fight Westerners. They ended the episode with the two of them having a little swimming race after John taught Toranaga how to drop, how to dive, not drive, <laughs> how to dive. And uh, yeah, we're going to be getting into the thick of things now. So without any further ado, let's jump into the episode. But just before I do, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads of this particular show or any of the others that I'm reacting to, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. And if you like this video, please continue to show it love and leave those comments. I really, really appreciate them, guys. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. What is that? That's the mail? Oh, there's a spy. Who is he delivering this to? Oh, this is the son? Nephew. The nephew of the guy, right? Ooh. That's right. He said, you better clean up this village. Get it in order. Your fife lord is here. Mm-hmm. Sweep up. Comb the cows. Wash the children. I don't know if you should smile so broadly quite yet, sir. We don't know what's in store, <laughs> especially with Toranaga. Oh. oh. Like her husband's not even cold. Yeah, right? I'm with her. Right? Did he die though? We didn't see a body. That's asking a lot, but hey, at least she gave halfway. Mm. Yeah, I quit. <laughs> Hashtag F this job. Mm. I love how he always just casually gives information way later to this guy. Have I? I mean, they were going to come after him regardless. Mm. Thank you. Well, that's a welcome. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Know that. 
I mean, you didn't know he was coming. I'm sure he'll let it go. Sure is. Yes, please use his proper term. Okay. I think your dad already knows not to trust this man, but appreciate the consul counsel. Oh. And fuck yourself. You sniveling little shit brag. Hmm. Well, you were the one who came in with attitude, so he owes you nothing at this point. He's like, oh, I got this, son. Ooh, the fan. That's right. What he said, times ten. That is definitely a way to inspire people. He doesn't seem arrogant. How long do we have to do this? It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that he refuses to tell Yamashiki anything. He's like, I don't trust you. I don't know if you picked that up from before, but I don't trust you. I will let you know. You will be on a need to know basis. <laughs> oh, I love it. Toranaga's smart. You don't want to stay anywhere too long. Mm -mm. Make it hard for them to find you. His head may be valuable, but you got to find it first. I wonder how long it's been since he's been in the hole. Feels like it's been a week or two. Now, let go. I'm afraid you are forbidden from boarding without permission. Exactly. This is, you know, you have a position, but you're still in a rank of command. Your there ship. something you need. Well, there is, yes. My pistols and my men. Yeah, no, that's Toranaga's ship. Now look here, Mariko. Oh, look here. Your lord and I had an arrangement. Did, the, did you? A ship. And it's crew. I don't believe he actually Not said that. You're quite mistaken. Exactly. Your ship and crew now belong to Toranaga sama. As they always have. And he will use them as he wishes. Period. Small print. Learn to read, John. Well, thank you for the clarification. Mm, take notes next time. Oh. Breathe through it, bro. Breathe through it. You're taking the right steps. Just stay on this path. You'll get the trust back. Your house is ready for inspection. Right this way. My house. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you can sleep in the street if you want, but we're trying to encourage you to bathe more, so. Everything here has been prepared specially by your Oh, I love that they're walking on the stones. And wait, wait, wait a minute. How long am I expected to be here? As long as Toranaga well, wants you to be. This training will take at least six months. Hmm. You agreed to train these men, you remember? Hmm. I do, yes. For the return of my men and my ship. Please, be patient, Anjin-sama. Right? We just started. Well, I'm sure she's very nice, but I don't want a woman. I wish to pillow her, pillow on her, or near, do any damn pillowing at all. Hmm. We'll see what happens after six months. To refuse would be a terrible insult to our. Hmm. Lord. Breathe through it, John. I do refuse. Oh well, when I refuse all of this. You can go back to the Christians that want to kill you. And I'm bloody prisoner all over again. Are you? Just with better living quarters. Are you? You had the choice to die. It was a choice. Oh, thank God. Didn't you? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you got smart ideas, huh? Hmm. Oh, you think? Okay, do it, please. Make such a loud and stupid move. I dare you. I can't believe they're talking this boldly and stupidly when they know they're still a spy in their midst. Go away. She won't. Oh. 
If it's any consolation, you're both in kind of the same boat. She doesn't want to be there any more than you do. It's not customary for one's consort to sleep while he's awake. That's a foolish custom. It's not yours to judge. And recently, her husband and infant son were put to death. Hmm. You're not the only one going through some stuff, John. Shouldn't she be grieving, then? She is. We grieve those we have lost by continuing their fight. Rubbish. To you. Child has no fight. But I agree about that. The child did not deserve that. Well, you'd never know it to look at her. Bereaved mother or widow. Well, not all cultures grieve the same. Do you know the Eightfold Fence? I do not. Please, please enlighten us. It is something we are taught to build within ourselves. An impenetrable wall behind which we can retreat whenever we need. If you really listen, your present circumstance vanishes. Meditate, basically. Do not be fooled by our politeness, our bows, our means of rituals. Mm -hmm. We could be a great distance away. In other words, don't judge a book by its cover, John. But I get how different it is because Western culture is very open and loud and free with their emotions, whereas other cultures tend to be much more reserved, especially Japanese culture. I don't know where you were supposed to get those guns, but it's probably a good thing you have them because Yabashige is still up to some nonsense. There is no need for this. You are protected as Adam of old. For some reason, I just can't shake the memory of our first meeting. Well, you started it. Give the guns to Fujisama. She's your consort. She will give her life to defend them. I could damn well defend myself. Anjin-sama! Right? Like, can we get somewhere today? Your pride is exhausting. Today. Okay, happy now? Everyone can put it away now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. No. We're going to do a little middle ground here. He's not carrying the guns, right? You didn't say she couldn't. Let's just go with middle ground here. There's beef. All right? Middle ground. He doesn't carry the guns, but you don't get to have them either. I understand where John's coming from, but he, again, has to recognize he's not at home. <laughs> okay? He's literally has to earn his respect back because he's been lying since he showed up as well. <laughs> Okay. Maybe let them know they're waiting for you to fail, so you better BS well, John. 60,000 Islamic Turks, the cream of the Ottoman Empire, had come against 600 Christians. Bro, she's got to translate, condense, to the point. Look at him, she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry, you said taught? Taught, yeah. You didn't experience? When did this battle occur? Well, yeah, well. 35, 40 years ago. Without guns? So you yourself did not fight in this battle. He did not. He was not born yet. Even born when this battle Yes, was that's born. correct. Yeah, what, what's going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's so funny too watching John kneel because that's how I am. I can't sit on the back of my heels either. So this would be me. Not a great deal of infantry battles at sea. Hmm. <laughs> Her face. Well, damn. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? It's true, though. John, John did try to tell Toranaga. I mean, John, come on. You can come up with something. Gun tactics are useless compared to the fine art of English naval warfare. Yeah, I mean, that is more what England excelled at. Just let me demonstrate. I think that's better. Because John's very concise when he's telling the truth, but when he's trying to BS, it just does a lot of babble. Is it? Are they? Okay. Maybe the Portuguese don't know what they're talking about. The Brits did know what they were doing when it came to naval. What did you say about it not being accurate again? Hmm. Oh, we're open now, huh? We're all gonna be deaf, though. You're wasting so many cannonballs. Are those reusable? Good for him. He's learning. 
The more he learns, the less ignorant he will be, and he'll be able to actually know when people are saying things. <laughs> These people are like, these damn cannons all day. You looking a little too hard, Mariko. I'm not seeing no grieving for your husband here. Where are the tears? Where's the rage? Oh, she's gonna take a look at the journal herself. Did Toronaga tell her to translate it? Burn to hell. Oh yeah, I don't think she knows about the fact that he torched the Catholic bases. But she does know he's an enemy of the church. Forgive me, Anjin Sama, but I think you should remember your oath is to Toranaga Sama. Hmm. And not to the orders that brought you here. Your crimes against the Portuguese. Hmm. I've read them in your own words. And they are crimes. Those were Catholics trying to kill him in Osaka. Yes, trying to kill you. Yes. A modern navy, ships built for war, would be to his benefit. You have no idea what is or is not to my lord's benefit. Right, you don't even understand this land yet, sir. What the hell was that? Earthquake. They happen a lot in Japan. The earthquake. A, a, a baby what? <laughs> oh, earthquake! Doesn't scare you, does it? May not even get a chance to go to war. Earthquake could take you all out. Yes, baby earthquake. That was a little tremor. See how well you can pilot a tsunami. Wow, wow, okay. Was not expecting that. Is that his wife? Or is that the, the concubine? Wasn't she the one brought in for the uncle? Back in episode one? Oh, yeah, struck that ego, sis. I mean, isn't the session over? So many people with their own little greedy ambitions. Increases the radius within which damage occurs and the nature they of the damage itself. They don't what you're saying. You'll see, you'll see. But who knows, maybe some of them are picking up some English. Mm, watch yourself, Mariko. What? Why? Is this an envoy or is this a warning? And what are you gonna do, Yabashige? I don't trust you. Can I help you with your crooked ass hat? What? What do you mean? Mm. It's that simple. Can't walk the fence, buddy. Wow. Ever the salesman. Why are you showing this to him? Exactly. For what reason? That's, okay. That's not what Toranaga said to do. This is not good. You're going to have to kill all of them, you know that, right? Really? Okay, buddy. You are so full of it, and Toronaga knows it. Hence why you don't know nothing about it. He's probably right there in the camp right now, hiding again. Is it? Or maybe you should have just picked a side and stuck to it. If he returns to Osaka, he will no doubt be ordered to commit seppuku. Yep, that's how it is out here, John. <laughs> He's like, I'm not really hungry anymore. Ooh, delicious. Try it. I bet you, I know it's better than British food. I know it is. Excuse my crude nothing. I'd Ooh. like to thank her for her excellent service to this house. He's like, go ahead and arm yourself, girl. Those are the best guns a sailor can have, and I'll miss that one greatly. But if she's one to do her job well, she'll need the best. Facts. Oh, I think you can figure it out, sis. That first day, you, you worked pretty well instinctually. Yes, just take the gesture. And I think you're going to need it, especially because you're in this house. Offend her. Your presence in general offends her, but no, not, not about this. Oh, she has a sword for you. Aw, see exchange. Fujisama as your consort, like you to carry her family's swords. Respect. You see what happens when you act nicely, John? I can't accept that. You have to. It's rude if you don't. Katachi can no gojirimasuru. <laughs> you knew exactly what he meant. 
<laughs> he... Rhonda, no obligation to try to see. <laughs> She's warning you, bro. What's Nato? Do I want to? Oh, nope. The texture's a no. Sure. Don't. Y'all are bad. Look like cheese. Is it? Here's the thing. I'm a texture person. That's why I couldn't do it. Anything slimy or too chewy? Mm -mm. You're lying, but we appreciate you trying it. That's that's exactly what you do when you go to a different country. Try to enjoy the culture where you can. Mm. Trap, don't fall for it. No, son, I don't think you should do anything. No, I don't think that should be you. No, I don't like it. Yeah, because... Oh, God. Oh, God. Toronaka's about to lose a son. He's about to lose a son. They are baiting you and you're falling right into it, boy. <sighs> sure you will. They're going to make sure that you're the one who's going to have to take the fall and not Yabushige, you silly, silly boy. He's so unlike his dad, it's crazy. But I guess his dad probably raised him to be that way. Or maybe he didn't have a choice. I don't know. You finally washing? Thank the Lord. Ah! The hell, you pervert? I am happy to see you have changed your mind about baby. Right? Thank you. We all thank you. Especially since they all have to share a house. I have not told you my family name, but it is well known in Japan. Do tell us. Ooh. For a long time, I have been unable to seek resolution for what happened. Okay. But recently, Toranaka-sama offered me away. What sort of resolution? Being here, I see a magic woman. And one who owes me no explanations. Okay. Smooth, John. Why are you getting so close, bro? Put some pants on. I think my boss go. Bro, you barely washed under your pits. I need to see my queen. Really? You receive us. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Really? Sit down for a stuffy dinner. And then to make up for it, I take us all to see a play. I just don't know if the queen was taking visitors quite like that back then, you know? I suppose we go for a walk. I oh, would you? Yes. Some poor Suru. Some poor. Suru. Long Thames. Didn't John say he was married last episode? You can almost forget. Troubles in your past. It's you. He gets so poetical when he talks about water. But truthfully, do you think the Thames was less gross looking back in the 1600s? Because it's not the prettiest river now. Going back to reading the diary. It's like she's trying to reconcile what she's reading in the diary and what she believes. And then the man that she's seeing. Trying to figure out like what to believe. Why are we why are we holding the shot so long? What's going on? What's gonna happen? Who's coming in? Is that no that long that hair seems too long for Madako? Is that what's her name? Kuki Kiki Cuckoo? The girl who was sleeping with the nephew. I can't see faces. I can't see the face. Can't see a damn thing! Yeah, I think I think it's the the concubine. Medico would never. At least not like this. And it's dark. He can't see. Right? I think it has to be. That's a, There's a reason they're not showing your face. Or am I just really that blind? Let me turn off this brightness, girl. Very beautiful today. Oh, is it? Rain. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it was her. I bet it's about to get real awkward right now. Good morning. Wow. Dial it back, John. You seem in good spirits. Right? She's like, I have no idea why. As I should be. Should you? The courtesan was acceptable then. I'm glad to hear it. Okay, Which good. Mind, I thought she would make a pleasing gift. I was right. Oh, you thought it was her. No. Look at her. She's like, was I wrong? <laughs> her husband's been dead for 15 minutes, sir. That was a very thoughtful gift. Hmm. 
That smile was interesting. But yeah, I didn't I don't see that in medical. She seems like the kind of girl that, you know, you know, she seems like the kind of girl that if she was gonna do that, she'd wanna do it in the daylight. She'd wanna look right in his eyes, you know? She doesn't look like she's a shy type. Yes, he is. Get over it. God, what did this boy do? Oh my god, I feel like everyone's gonna die and it's gonna turn out really bad. Don't do it. Whatever you're planning, don't do it. I, I beg, don't do it. Your daddy wouldn't want you to do it. Don't do it. Not the horses! Why? Did you know? The horses did nothing! You freaking idiot! Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. Oh, God. No, don't get involved, bro. Because... Oh, God, yeah. Oh. Look at this. Look at the nephew laughing. And she's like, yep. Yep, this boy just made the stupidest mistake he could possibly make. And the worst part is his daddy ain't going to be proud of him. His daddy is not going to be impressed. Oh, you foolish boy. Oh my God. Are you sure that's your child, Toranaga? Because what the hell? Your dad's not ready. He wanted six months for training. And oh my God. <laughs> Why? Why? Why is ego make people so stupid? Oh my God. I'm mad for Toranaga. I'm mad for Toranaga. He been warning. He been saying that that boy ain't too bright. And now he just went and proved it. Whew. All right, guys. Well, that was episode four. And that was a fuster cluck at the end. What is going on? Well, anyways, I guess if there's anybody who might be able to find a way to maneuver around it, it's Tornaga. But I wouldn't be surprised if he takes his son out himself, to be honest. Because why? There was no reason for this. Like, I get it. This was not a planned visit. I get that Tornaga would not want battle plans necessarily going out to Ishido. But Ishida, I should say. But the Tornaga that we've seen thus far is a very methodical man. He thinks, like I said, he's a chess player. He doesn't react to things. He's someone who plans things. He has several plans laid down. He had to have already known that, that the Shida would send somebody out to, to check on him to see what was going on as soon as he had any idea where they might be. He didn't try to hide the fact that he was sending people to that seaside village or that he was bringing the engine there. So he had to know that they would make a move and... Oh my gosh, I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe he knew at some point they were gonna, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not a strategist when it comes to these types of things. I have no no understanding of war by, by choice. I am very, very ignorant about those things, but I just have to think that Toranaga had an idea that Ishida would make a, a move and that something could happen and what would he do if Shida did make a move? I don't know if he could have anticipated that his son would be this. Maybe he would though, he, he knows his son. He does know his son. I don't know, we'll have to see. But anyhow, we'll come back to the ending in a second. But yeah, let's go through some of the other interesting things that came in in this episode. Definitely more chill until the end. Uh, this was definitely more about establishing the new, what, the new normal with John in this village. We see that Toranaga showed up and basically he's using Yabashige's soldiers at the moment, even though technically because Yabashige is in his fife, these are his soldiers. But I get that in each of these chunks of land, I'm guessing that the people and the soldiers there are probably more loyal to their the lord that they're most familiar with. Again, they know that there's a respect hierarchy for Toranaga, but really the man they would have seen day to day and like I said, maybe had more loyalty to would be whoever their fife lord was, which was Shabashige. But I don't know. I'm not sure what kind of a lord Yabashige is. He seems very hedonistic to me. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy that cares much about the people like that, but I could be wrong. But anyhow, we see that his son or his nephew is really the person who is the lord of that area. And it's just Yabashige's fife, I guess. But anyhow, now that things were kind of set up and we see that Toranaga basically, you know, went and in my opinion, did a really good job with the speech, you know, talking about the fact that, hey, war is coming one way or another. There's not much we're going to be able to do to stop it. But I really think that, you know, if you're willing to fight for me and stand by me, 
then I'm the one who's going to be bowing to you. Like it's my salute to you. I'm not expecting, you know, well, he is expecting loyalty, but not without respect, so to speak. And we saw that last episode, right? When, um, when, uh, Mariko's husband was going to sacrifice himself for the cause. We saw that Toranaga got up and bowed to him, which is something he didn't have to do. So I do think Toranaga shows a lot of respect to the people he deals with and with his soldiers. And I think, like I said, it was a good way to kind of ingratiate some of those soldiers to his cause. But kind of like when they were pulling up to shore and Medico said that these are all Yabashige soldiers and they're loyal to Toranaga. And he was like, yeah, let's hope so. I think that was a valid point in that, yes, yeah, some of them might do it because they, they're supposed to, but I'm sure that there are people, as I said, that are more loyal to maybe Yabashige or his nephew, or maybe just don't like Toranaga at all, who knows? But something like this, especially a war at the scale of which they might be going into, you there's no guarantees that everyone's gonna be on your side. And I don't think any of these soldiers recognize yet that this war is gonna be them against potentially four other lords, right? That's a lot. So anyhow, so that's where Toranaga left things. And as usual, he disappears. <laughs> and I said in the episode, I think that's very smart of him to not necessarily be easily pinpointed. He is a wanted man. And as they brought out, his head is now worth a lot in Japan. So staying in one place, is just not going to be safe for him or the people around him. So he said he's got other things to attend to and he left. And once again, he didn't tell Yabashige his, his plans. And I love that. He didn't tell his son either. I think he very much keeps everything to himself. There might be one or two people he trusts, but I don't think any of them know that each other is, each, is a trusted person, if that makes sense. We definitely picked up on this in the last episode, at least I did, that Toranaga does not trust many people at all, if he trusts anyone. And it's probably worked very well for keeping him alive, but it's probably also excruciatingly lonely, unfortunately. But anyhow, he definitely doesn't trust his son fully either, because I think if his son had any inkling of what his father was planning to do, he never would have made the move that he did at the end of the episode. And we saw last episode that his son is so eager to show his dad that he's like such a badass. And I somewhat get it. Like we don't know much about Toranaga's son yet, but growing up under the shadow of his dad, who from what we've picked up so far has quite a reputation already and coming from this bloodline that's considered to be so majestic, I can understand that he probably feels a level of pressure and also that certain people feel like he doesn't deserve to have maybe the respect that he's kind of trickle down onto him because of his father. But I don't know. These are all just guesstimates of, of mine right now, but I could see that if that's the case, but either way it does not excuse what ends up happening. But anyhow, we see that once Tornaga established things, he disappears, doesn't tell anyone where he's going, and they set John up with his own home and like basically with everything that comes along with becoming a Hatamoto, Hatamoto which he still doesn't really fully understand what that means yet. But we see that uh, he and the nephew of y Yabashigi's nephew, of course they have beef because that was the first person that John interacted with. I am not totally anti that beef in the sense of, I'm not saying that they shouldn't squash it because they should, but like I said, John was a complete ass when he landed on their shores, okay? He was very entitled. He was acting as though these people owed him something. And he was the one who was being highly disrespectful to Yabashige's nephew to begin with. And again, I'm not saying that he didn't have a right to like ask questions or try to figure out what's going on, but you don't need to speak a language to know when someone's being disrespectful to you. Like it's in their body language, it's in their tone, it's in the way they act. And John was very much being disrespectful when he showed up and yeah, Shige's nephew responded to that energy. It's not to say he wouldn't have been a jerk regardless, but we're never know because John didn't come in with an energy at all that said, hey, I'm trying to be nice here. So anyway, they've got beef regardless and they do need to squash it, but understandably John does not feel safe around him. And he saw that man, he also saw him take off the head of that one guy that was praying for him. So John is rightfully a little worried and he wants to keep some form of weapons on him, especially if Toranaga's not there to step up and stand up for him. And we see that that was a bit of an argument and he got some clarification on the situation that he's in. Cause we see that he thought that when he agreed to train the men, that that meant he got everything right away. And we see that Mariko, she straightened him out. She was like, no, no, that's not the deal. The deal was that you work for six months or however long Toronaga tells you to work and 
perhaps at the end of that, he will return the ship to you. But it is still Toranaga's at this point, right? So John is expecting to get payment for something he hasn't done yet, which I mean, like, bro, I don't know how they do business in English back in the 1600s, but most places you need to do the job before you get paid, right? It's a tip, it's, it's, it's an exchange. And at that point, you hadn't done any training, yet you wanted access to the ship. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Toranaga don't know you and he don't trust you yet. You need to earn that. So anyway, at least now John knows the terms, but he does not like it because again, we know that if he'd had access to the ship and his men, the first chance John got, you know he would have been on that ship and out of there, right? We know this. And so does Toradaga. So this is why he's not giving him access yet. And John, of course, realizes his plans are frustrated. And as I said, John will hopefully start to figure out pretty quickly that Toranaga is a very long thinker, a very broad thinker. Yeah, anything that John's thought of, Tornaga's probably already thought of four times over. But anyhow, once John recognizes what the deal is, he starts training and he quickly realizes he can't give them any type of infantry training because he's not a soldier, but he has been on the seas a long time and I guess he's clearly dealt with other ships and he has some naval experience as far as possibly battling so he's like well i can tell you what i can do to build up a navy like is that i have experience in so i think that was smart that he very quickly figured out a way to pivot from the type of training that he thought or at least tornaga was expecting and we see that even uh, Yash um, Yabashige, who is determined to not be impressed by John, was impressed by the fact that he did teach him something new. So that was the training that they were doing. And the idea would be that they would be able to potentially attack Osaka or any of the other places from the sea, which is not a terrible idea. I mean, I hate the idea of warfare, but he's not wrong. Like if they can take down a lot of Osaka or their defenses from the sea before they even get off the boats, that would definitely put them at an advantage. So anyway... That's what ended up happening with that. And then we also saw John assimilating to his new home. He was assigned a consort, which we see is the widow that was back from episode one and two. She is still very much in her grieving era and she does not have any love for John because of the xenophobia, quite frankly. But we see that Toranaga wants her to be this person. And I think, again, Toranaga is a long thinker, right? He always is looking at things that are far in advance. And while she doesn't necessarily understand why Toranaga is making her do this right now, I somewhat see it. I think Toranaga wants her to do this because um, we see Mariko talk about it later where she's like, she needs a place. She needs to have a purpose because if she just sits and wallows in her grief, which is very valid at the moment, don't get me wrong, but that's really what's going to cause her to eventually get very depressed and spiral. And so I think Toranaga is trying to show that like, if you have a cause, if there's something for you to focus on where you feel valuable and you feel like your life is worth something, it'll take your mind off of how sad you are and how much you feel like you don't want to continue on because of what happened. So he may be right. He might be wrong, but I don't, I do agree with him in that it does help somewhat with the grieving process to have something else to focus on, at least even if it's temporarily. So she agreed to do six months, but I have a feeling she's definitely going to stick out the year should it last a year. And we see that her and John eventually start to kind of figure each other out, right? John realized that she's not just some, some, I don't know, simpering woman, especially when she came up with the compromise around the guns. And she's starting to recognize that John, when he wants to be, can actually be very agreeable and kind and thoughtful. So at least they're now on the same page. And he gave her one of his guns, which like I said, I think is definitely going to end up being something she's going to have to use. Anyone who's associated with John for the time being is in danger. Let's be real. There are a lot of people trying to take him out and anyone who's work associated with him could eventually or essentially, I should say, become casualties. So I do think it's a good idea that she's got something to arm herself with since I don't think ladies were allowed to carry a sword back then. So I think that she understood that and we see that she gave John her father's and uh, her, her father's swords which is a very sentimental gift. And I'm glad that John appreciated the gravity of that gift and even refused it at first. But yes, he's learning, as I said, when John kind of lets the ego drop, he's very endearing and he's actually learning a lot more. And so we see that those are the things as well that are endearing him to Mariko, who I think we can safely say has got a fat crush. <laughs> I think we can safely say that she is definitely crushing hard on John. I mean, she already found him attractive from the first time they met, but now that she spent more time with him and of course she's teaching him English and 
everything else and seeing how he interacts with the men. That's one thing I have to say with John from the get go. He has been very, very respectful of the men, like the, the crews that he's worked with, whether it's on the ship or with the guys, you know, with the cannons. John has really made an effort to be respectful to them. And, you know, he talks respectfully to them. He says, please and thank you. And I just really appreciate that. And I think that the men are picking up, even though they don't understand a word he's saying, I think they're picking up on the fact that John's really trying to be respectful of them and work with them. So anyways, I think all of those things, when John drops the ego, like I said, he's very endearing and that's what Mariko is responding to. And we see that she's been reading the journals his journal to figure out what's going on and what's in them. And as I said in the episode, I think she's trying to figure out who John really is because she is being charmed by him. She is attracted to him, but she wants to know the real John or if she's being fooled. And then of course she reads the diary and she sees that he's done some pretty awful things. And I guess, I think she's just trying to reconcile who this man really is. Like, is he the nice guy who's kind of sweet and thoughtful and bumbly or is he actually a mass murderer who's taking out people who are part of this religion that I do have feelings or or a loyalty to right so she's just trying to figure that out but I think she's understanding that these both of these things can be true and as John pointed out like he's got his own reasons for why he's done what he's done and it's not like he's the only person who's done something wrong here again doesn't make it less wrong but you know we have to put it in perspective in that it's not necessarily that he's just doing this for no reason. There is a war going on between these two factions and this is part of war. But anyways, we saw that they had that little moment where Mariko talked about why she's doing this work, that it's not just because of the Catholic church and she saw John naked and she definitely liked what she saw. And yes, there's just a lot, you know, we see it, you know, the tension is brewing. They definitely like each other. And it's an interesting situation. Like I said, I don't think Medico is right. She's getting there. We see that that's what happened too, that John got a courtesan. We've, <laughs> he keeps swearing up and down. He did not want to pillow anybody. But as I said, give him some time. <laughs> give him some time. You know, it, it's, uh, it, it, the days get long and the nights get longer. So anyway, I think it was the same girl who's sleeping with the, with the, ne with the nephew of Yabishige. I'm not sure. But either way, it's established now that they both like each other. There's definitely something there, but we'll see what happens with that or if anything happens with that. And then outside of that, just coming back to the end, we see that Yabashige is in a bad place. I said in the last episode that if he rode both sides of the fence at some point, he was going to get hit from both sides. And that's th that time is coming. Ashida's like, hey, you're going back. You're training with him. This looks like war. If you don't come back and basically let us take you out, then you're an enemy and we're going to take you out anyway. So he basically was messed up either way. Didn't know what to do. And then his nephew's like, maybe I've come up with a solution for getting someone else to take the heat for you. And we see that unfortunately, as I talked about at the beginning of this review, uh, what's his name? I don't know his name, but um, Toranaga's son, he is eager to please his father. He is eager to make his mark and he's very impetuous and very unlike his dad. And we see that Yabashige's nephew played him like a violin, stroked his ego, planted the seeds. And unfortunately, because uh, Toranaga's son was already halfway trying to do something silly, it didn't take much to push him over the edge. And unfortunately, he did something dumb. And it's the execution of it that bothers me. I said it in the episode that they all had to die anyways, because you don't want your, your enemy to know your plans. But if Toranaga had been there, he would have found a way to do it that did not implicate them so directly, but there's no getting around this. There's too many witnesses. He's probably lost the, well, Tornaga's son has probably lost the respect of all the soldiers that are there as well. And it's just, it's a mess now. But like I said, I just got to think that Tornaga, I feel like he already knows what's happening. I feel like he still has spies. We know he still has the spy in that village, but I think he's got other spies and other people watching what's going on. And I think he knew that Ishida was on its way long before the group did. So I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe Toronaga is going to be very surprised and upset. I know he's definitely going to be disappointed in his son regardless, but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong and he plant and maybe he actually thought his son could do something like this. And he kind of anticipated that this might be a chain reaction. I don't know. We'll have to see how strategic and just how much of a battle master this man is. But either way, the tone is set and we saw what Mariko said at the end of the episode. This is war now. Like at this point, this is war and there's no getting around it because as I said, this, this too many witnesses, too messy, too loud. There's no way to hide all of this. And yeah, Yabashige is, his neck is going to be off the pile. Well, I mean, it's not off the chopping block yet, 
But Tornaga's son is definitely higher up there now. They're definitely gonna be going after him first. So ah, things have kicked off. I think the, the pleasant, quiet period is over. We're gonna be getting into the nitty gritty and probably starting the beginnings of this battle now. And I'm very interested to see what Tornaga's thoughts are on where we're at. I kind of missed him in this episode, but I feel like when we see him again, it's going to more than make up for his absence in this episode. So yes, another great episode, guys. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please show some love to this video and I will see you in the next one.